Hello everyone, welcome back to Clinical Research Method. Today we will talk about the topics that are closely related to the data collection and preparation for later analysis. Research data are collected by measuring aspects of objects or events to describe what we are studying. The collected data are typically stored electronically in some numerical format. However, they are not just numbers. They are numbers with context, which makes the data informative and meaningful. In addition, not all observations possess all the characteristics of numbers. Because the data are basic um, ingredients of statistical recipe to follow, it is critical uh, to correctly identify the characteristics of those numbers assigned to each variable so that we can cook them properly. So now let's take a look at some data, um, how they're organized using statistical software for real. Okay, because this is uh, our first time uh, using Jamovi, so let's just uh, start from scratch. Um, so before you open um, any files, um, you want to actually open the program first. So let's go to cloud.jamovi.org. Okay, so this is the um, um, the start menu. So you just um, click it away, and now let's go to GC Learn to download the data. Courses. Clinical research method. And we so it's under week two and on the levels of measurement. Now this is Excel sheet. You do not open it, but oh, you can just click it to oh boy, okay, now, so just a save somewhere um safe or somewhere you can find that easy. Desktop, save. Okay, now I save this. Now I can go back to the Chamobi. Um, so open this device and desktop. So double click. Uh, hopefully open the data. Sometimes the cloud version is not very stable um, unless you have a very strong internet connection. But now here we are. So let's just... Uh, uh, oh, so this is the um, cloud. So I can make it bigger like this. So hopefully you can see it better. All right, so... Um, as you can see here, uh, we have different columns of variable. So this is actually the, um, the actual data collected about like a two years ago in the same module, clinical research method. Um, this was part of the coursework where students need to measure their own uncorrected visual acuity uh, in the right eyes, left eyes, and both eyes. And then I gave them like testing order here, right? The first column represents testing order. So S represents OS, U represents OU, D represents OD. So um, I just uh, give kind of random order um, to minimize the order effect in testing their visual acuity. 
So um, all these numbers here under OD, OS, OU represents logmar values, right? They're, they're visual QTs uh, measured in logmar unit, right? So these are actual numbers, right? So you can do any mathematical operations uh, between these values. But if you look at the gender variable, right? Um, I don't know if you noticed it, you have kind of a different icons you have. So for visual acuity measurement, you have rulers, right? Whereas for gender, you have um, some, you know, three circles, um, so which is different from the visual acuity measurement. So if you look at this, um, you see the gender here as a one, ones and twos. So here actually, uh, one represents uh, male and two represents female. So even though, so except for this testing order, this is text, right? So the type of data is text for testing order. So this is different from other um, variables in terms of type of data uh, that, was, uh, that, were, that was collected, right? But if you look at the gender, even if the data are in the form of numbers, do these numbers have same information like the visual cuties? So that is the question, right? So here, you know, these one and two, they don't really mean anything because they're just arbitrary number to distinguish different gender, you know, male from female, basically, right? So you can't really do any mathematical operations between these two values under gender column, right? So that the kind of uh, information um, you have in the gender variable is qualitatively different from the numbers used in the visual acuity measurement. Okay, let's. Oh my, okay, so uh, it just comes back. So that, that's just uh, you know, what happens when you use cloud version. Um, anyhow, so that, that was the point, right? Even though you have kind of a numbers as your data, right? But depending upon uh, the variables, right? Or the kind of um, you know, data you have, um, these numbers don't have the same meaning right so for that matter uh, we're gonna look at uh, the different types of data or the different levels of measurement in more detail um, later in the lecture as we just have seen not all the numbers contain the same amount of information depending upon the amount of information a datum possesses a measurement variable can be categorized into four different levels of measurement. Here, the levels of measurement is a general classification to describe the nature of information within the numbers assigned to variables. In some cases, the boundaries between the levels uh, may not be so straightforward, but many times this is often a very useful scheme to identify and classify the variables to properly analyze them later on. So I strongly suggest that you get used to this scheme for what's coming later um, as identifying the correct level of measurement is critical for a later analysis. So our first level of measurement is the nominal level of measurement, also known as categorical level of measurement. The type of data collected for this level of measurements are in the form of names, categories, or qualities. For example, let's say that you want to collect the data on the um, secondary schools in Glasgow that your classmates attended. Then the values you can assign to, uh, to the variable are like Glasgow High, Barristan Academy, or Douglas Academy, and so on. If a nominal variable has only two categories, then the variable has a special name called a binary 
or dichotomous variable. A representative example would be gender, where there are only female or male as possible values you can assign to. Other example is a handedness, left-handed or right-handed. Even though humans have two eyes, the IQ profession has developed a very unique system to indicate which eye they measure. According to this system, you can assign three values to the eye variable. So OD for right eye, OS for left, and OU for both eyes. So categories in this level of measurement are often assigned numerical values, but the choice of these values are completely arbitrary. For example, we can assign one for male and two for female to simplify the gender data. Well, how about three and four? Five and six? So basically, you can just assign any arbitrary values. So it never matters whatever numbers you assign as long as they are different numbers. Because they are arbitrary, no arithmetic operations, including ordering between different values or categories are allowed, even when the data are recorded with numbers instead of words. For example, say now you assign one for female and two for male this time. Do you think you can add those two numbers to get three? Well, I don't think so, because that means you are adding male and female. Then what's the outcome of the addition? A baby? Well, that makes three, but what if you have twins or triplet? With all the jokes aside, I hope you see what I'm getting at, right? So, also, you cannot rank order the categories in any directions. So say, now you assign one for male and two for female. Does that mean the male is better than female? Uh, whatever that means, just because male is assigned to one. I hope you don't answer yes to this question unless you are a sexist. So the only possible operations on the values of nominal variables are counting, meaning that you can only count how many times each category occurs, which is a statistic called frequency. Another possible operation for the nominal level of measurement is to compare whether any two categories are identical or not. For example, a male is same as other male as long as they are males, and a male is different from a female. And when two categories are different, um, though usually nothing can be exactly said, about how they differ and how much they differ. So the next level of measurement in line is the ordinal level of measurement that has more information than the nominal measurement. So this level has all the properties of normal uh, nominal measurement plus ordering information between any two values. However, we still can't, cannot tell anything about the nature of the difference between any two values from this level of a measurement. Again, numerical values are often assigned to this level of a measurement, but still no arithmetic operation is possible as any two consecutive values do not have the same interpretation throughout the scale. So a typical example of an ordinal level of a measurement is probably the N point. So N number of point rating scale, you may have seen a lot from the customer satisfaction survey. Here we have a five point rating scale to rate how much the respondent agrees or disagrees to the provided statements. There is an obvious order between the values of this scale as you can see, but it is not known if the difference between any two consecutive values or ratings, for example, between the neutral and agree is necessarily same as the difference between the disagree and the neutral. This is the table of visual impairment categories based on the International Classification of Diseases 10th Revision, published by World Health Organization 
also known as who. Here, numbers are assigned to denote the degree of impairment in ascending order, but if you look at how each category is defined, you wouldn't say that the differences between the categories are consistent throughout, would you? Now, the interval level of measurement has all the properties of nominal and ordinal levels of measurement. Unlike the ordinal, interval level has a numerical scale where differences between any two consecutive values are same throughout. Sometimes an interval scale includes the value of zero in its scale, but this zero here is not the absolute zero representing the true absence of the property, magnitude, strength, or intensity that the scale is meant to measure. So one of the uh, very well-known example of the uh, interval level of measurement is temperature measured in Celsius. As you can see from the picture, uh, we can see that the tick marks are all equidistant each other and the scale includes zero in the middle. However, this is not a true absolute zero because zero Celsius does not mean the absence of temperature. It is just a relative position between hot and cold. As there is no absolute zero in this level of measurement, in theory, direct multiplication or division between the values of interval level of measurement is not meaningful. However, people perform such operations quite frequently in practice with the interval level of a measurement, even though what's truly meaningful is the uh, ratio of differences only. Um, any cyclic data, such as time of the day or angle of an arc in degree, are other examples of the interval level of measurement. Finally, the ratio level of measurement is at the top of all the levels of measurement. This level has all the properties of the previous three levels plus absolute zero, so which is a unique and non-arbitrary value. So the absolute zero here represents the theoretical absence of the quantity or property you are measuring. For example, when the variable body weight is measured in kilogram, then the zero kilogram here can be assigned to mean the com complete absence of weight, even though we know that it does not actually happen in real life. Categories from this level of a measurement have all the arithmetic characteristics of numbers, so any arithmetic operation is allowed. Now that you learned about all the levels of a measurement, you should be able to classify your data into one of the four categories in practice, right? Well, it may take some time to get used to this, but you'll get the hang of it. In addition to identifying the proper level of measurement for your collected data in an experimental research, there is another practical consideration you need to take account into, which is the errors in measurement. So you probably agree that no me measurements are free from error, so, and it does happen, so it is very important to characterize and manage these errors when we measure something um, to collect the data. In doing so, we need to understand how these errors are characterized and reported. Um, with the exception of obvious human errors such as finger errors, measurement errors due to other uncontrollable and unknown sources are statistically characterized by two quantities, uh, namely accuracy and precision. To establish these two quantities, repeated measurements per sample or subject are strongly recommended, which is called a technical replicate. So, what I'm going to show here is a sample of technical replicates generated by one of the eye care tonometers, uh, which are portable uh, handheld devices used to measure 
intraocular pressure. So compared to the old Goldman tonometry, measuring intraocular pressure gets much easier than ever with this type of uh, devices. So in this high resolution slow-mo video, the device measures intraocular pressure with a tiny probe by gently drumming down the cornea six times in a split second. And it'll provide the accuracy and precision of the given measurement. Even though they're used interchangeably in everyday language, as if they are the same, they actually mean different from the context of uh, metrology, which is the science of uh, measurement. In a stricter sense, uh, accuracy represents the degree of how close a measurement is to the true value, which is typically unknown to us that we try to estimate. When your measurement is far away from the true value, then your measurement is called biased. However, knowing this quantity alone is not enough to describe the measurement characteristics of a device because accuracy alone does not tell us how reproducible or reliable a measurement is. Therefore, we need another component of errors in measurement called precision. So precision is defined as the degree of how close a set of measurements is to each other, given that they are obtained in exactly the same manner. The concept of precision is closely related to reliability of a measurement, and the opposite is a variability of a measurement. Sometimes precision is confused with the measurement resolution, but they are different in that the letter represents the smallest difference that can be meaningfully distinguished by the measurement. Now, we can use the target and shooter metaphor to illustrate the difference between the accuracy and precision visually. For example, here we have a red target and shooting results are represented by the black dots. The aim of the shooter is the very center of the concentric target. So let's say that this is the shooter one, and needless to, uh, needless to say, we can all agree that this shooter is very accurate as well as precise because all the shots landed at the center of the target and they are very close to each other. On the other hand, um, what about the, uh, this shooter too, number two? Unless she or he aimed at the corner on purpose, um, the average location of the shots are actually far from the center. However, we can see that the shooter is at least quite precise as all the shots are very close together, no matter how far they are from the center. So what is possibly going on here would be that the gun is not calibrated well. Now, this shooter is less accurate compared to the first shooter, but better than the shooter two in terms of accuracy as the shots are more or less scattered around the center. However, precision of the shooter is less than the previous shooter two as the shots are more spread out. And finally, whoa, look at this. Uh, of all the shooters, uh, this one is the worst in terms of both accuracy and precision. The shots are all over the place, and I can call this uh, shooter a lousy shooter. We can characterize the accuracy and precision in a different way. Imagine that you collected hundreds of measurements of something, say, like IOP, the intraocular pressure from a single subject using a method and plotted them on a graph like this. The type of graph shown here is called a histogram, where the horizontal axis represents the measurement values and the vertical axis represents how frequent each measurement value appeared. A single vertical line on the right here, um, that, um, 
represents the location of the true value we are trying to estimate. And from this representation, uh, the center of the histogram in green roughly uh, represents the average of hundreds of measurements. And the accuracy is estima estimated by the distance between the true value and the average measurement. Whereas the spread of the histogram in red represents precision. So from this, we can call this measurement as inaccurate as well as imprecise as the distance between the true value and average and the average uh, is quite far away each other and the distribution has a large spread. On the other hand, the method two, so you measure the same intracular pressure, but using different method two, now it looks like a more precise than the previous measurement as the spread of the histogram is narrower than the first one. However, the method is still inaccurate as the distance between the true value and the average measurement is large. And now you use another uh, different method three, and now it looks like it's accurate uh, in that the average measurement is now very close to the true value. However, the method is still imprecise as the spread of the distribution is quite large. And finally, the last method is precise as well as accurate compared to all three previous methods as the location of the average is almost right on top of the true value that we're trying to estimate and the spread of the distribution is also narrower than all the other methods. So I hope you now understand the difference between the accuracy and precision of measurement. Now to the summary of the section.